Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, and I'm here today to record my initial impressions of my Pixelbook, my Google Pixelbook that I've been using for a few days, but a book of the initial impressions that I typed down, typed in, entered. Uh, I did the, the, the initial impressions uh, within about an hour or two of using the product for the first time. Uh, I have had a couple of days to play with it, and by play I mean work with it, you know, seeing if I could basically accommodate it within my current workflow, given that it's either going to be the Pixel Book that I'm going to keep right here, or it's going to be the iPad Pro. I'm reading the notes right now from uh, the iPad Pro. I've worn the battery down on the Pixel Book, but it's lasted, what, two or three, maybe even four days now? And that would be with somewhat average use. So I guess that's kind of impressive if you were wondering about battery life. I wouldn't say it was amazing, but got me through that much time, especially in initial periods when you use the system a little more than uh, normal, uh, I'm happy to say that, yeah, it's been as long as uh, it's it, it's been since I unboxed it live in this channel. I was going to share my initial impressions earlier, and specifically the initial impressions I'm going to share with you now. It's just that we did the live TLDR video on the weekend in this channel as opposed to the normal TLDR channel youtube.com slash locker room. So hopefully you don't mind the slight delay. The next video I want to do about or with the Chromebook is specifically comparing it to the experience I've had on the iPad Pro, which is where I'm reading the notes from. I don't know if you can quite catch the reflection of uh, the iPad Pro if I tilt the Chromebook just like so again with the... Oh, I got to use the glass side. There we go. There are my notes. <laughs> reading from the notes, theoretically. Uh, that's the odd light source in the room right now, so you'll have to pardon the color temperature if it's a little wacky. The uh, uh, the Chromebook, I will tell you, this Chromebook, this, this Pixelbook, has been impressive, yet not impressive at the same time. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't know if I could sit here and say that it is absolutely everything it's cracked up to be. I, I, I can't say that uh, up front, if only because I've certainly run into a few software snags or what I believe are software snags. That said, uh, I'll give Google, Google credit uh, for setting up product forms officially. And I know Apple's got product forms as well, you know, for the iPad Pro, but let's go ahead and just stick to the, the Chromebook uh, for, for this topic, uh, specifically the Pixelbook. I had an issue that I was running into and I didn't know if it could be replicated on other systems because I couldn't compare and I don't have any contacts at Google. I, I think they're like any other major company. They have no idea I exist. Yes, I know, even though I am doing this video on their platform. the uh, <laughs> You'd be surprised. Uh, I am but uh, a drop, a droplet really, uh, in the sea. So uh, I posted the issue and it seems that other people had the same issue, which was kind of you know, hopeful for me because I was able to file a bug report and get it into their system officially. It was pretty easy. And so we'll see if they address the problem. Uh, there are a few other uh, things that I, I ran into, uh, though, as, you know, the experience began and, of course, played out. Uh, for example, and I noted this during the uh, live unboxing video, which you may have watched or may not have, uh, some button styles during the setup wizard are styled differently than other ones, like legacy buttons that haven't been tweaked yet. And I did find that to be somewhat apparent throughout the rest of the Chrome OS experience. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, based upon my only other experience with a, a Chromebook, it's definitely far more full featured than uh, the, the one that I used several years ago, like three years ago. It's definitely full featured. There are certain features that I think I would still want to see or things that really aren't, aren't quite fleshed out yet. Uh, just for an example, um, in terms of a workflow, if I wanted to post an image, let's say share an image to Twitter, uh, I could do that easily from a traditional desktop, like a Mac OS desktop. But on this Pixelbook, even though I've got the photo sitting in Google Photos, the only way I could effectively seem to share it on Twitter was by sharing a link to the album for the single photo. I'm like, that's that's not what I want to do. So I, I tried, you know, right clicking and sharing that way. And I, I tried browsing like, you know, have you ever you know clicked the image button on a website uh, and, and then tried to uh, upload that photo? by way of that image upload button. Uh, by doing that, it opened up the system files dialog and photos was inexplicably not a part of it. Like, wait, how, how do I attach a photo? So I actually had to download, <laughs> oh, Google, download. This is what happens when you have a company run by engineers. 
that you had to, I, I had to download the photo to the, to, to the system from Google Photos and then upload it by way of that uh, file dialog, the download dialog. So I don't know why uh, the photos is missing. I haven't filed that as a bug report. I haven't seen if there's something else that I'm missing because that could be the case. Uh, but suffice it to say that was just one workflow snag that I ran into that just seemed to be a bit egregious. Uh, for uh, any kind of system, whether you know whether it costs a hundred dollars or a thousand, um, but that just kind of speaks to how Chrome OS is still in this constant state of evolution. Uh, I am hopeful that with every iteration, it will improve, not just with speed, but certainly with features and implementation. Uh, I noted that both video and scrolling are relatively smooth compared to, let's say, a Mac OS experience with Chrome, uh, and specifically the Chrome browser on on Mac OS. I, I've always had issues with uh, the performance of Chrome OS on the desktop, and unfortunately, there's no good way of, of toggling things on the desktop. You either have to turn off hardware acceleration, at which point a lot of the websites you use really fall apart, or you have to keep it on, at which point most of the scrolling performance across a variety of websites really suffers. So Chrome on the desktop is not a great web browsing experience. Uh, on Chrome OS, I think it, it it shines. It really does, and they've they've made it perform well. That said, uh, it was like the pixels aren't able to keep up. Like, um, for example, I, I was watching a video on, on StarWars.com, the Star Wars show, and at the beginning, you know, the Millennium Falcon kind of flies in, and I noted as I was watching this video that it kind of, it, it the, the Falcon jumped rather than, you know, just being a smooth uh, flight in, in whatever frame rate the video happened to be. So it was a little jittery in that sense, and I, I didn't go back to watch anything again, but... Uh, I, I will say that there's this kind of a delay or a, a blur at any resolution I've tried, specifically on the system seemingly, uh, as in scrolling, uh, and I've noticed this on a variety of systems really with LCDs, and I think it's, it's potentially a shortcoming of, of the actual hardware used, but uh, scrolling while smooth is kind of... Well, it's definitely not 120 hertz. That is for sure, uh, or 120 frames per second. Nowhere near it, but it was. it's just, it's not as clean in terms of scrolling. Uh, there's there's almost like a, a, a shadowed effect, like not image retention, uh, but almost like a motion blur uh, of sorts. And I haven't been able to, uh, you know, describe it in, in a better term, and there's probably a technical term for it. I haven't filed it as a bug report because, quite honestly, I don't believe it's a bug that's, a bug that could be fixed. It's probably something that's a limitation of the hardware, not so much um, the you know the, the software. I could be mistaken. Uh, I, I remember seeing this similar kind of effect on the very old Chromebook I tried, which you know makes me wonder if they're just not using world class hardware with the Chromebooks, which is just kind of shocking given the price point of this particular Pixelbook. Um, but yeah, I, I found uh, uh, you know certain things uh, would drop videos, kind of blur. Um, where they're not as blurry with each frame uh, on other uh, other systems, similarly similarly priced systems, uh, but that was still something that was a little uh, kind of disappointing to see. This the the, the best uh, word I could use to describe it is is blur. Um, generally, the items though that said are responsive when interacting with them on screen. So you know, I found it in in some cases that. In touching the the screen, the actual Pixelbook screen, as I flip it down here, um, let me do this here. I guess I'm going to. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, folks. If you vibrated, <laughs> did not mean to make you vibrate. But I found that I'm actually going to pull up the screen. See, it's telling me I got two two minutes of battery remaining. This is the only wallpaper I've found that doesn't exhibit the uh, the the screen blinky thingy. But uh, um, I probably shouldn't have opened it, but I just did. The uh, Oh, look, it rotates. I've never done that with this book before. Neat. It's clean rotation. It's a nice little animation there. Uh, I found that by tapping elements on the screen, somehow it was, uh, and sometimes it was more responsive than using the, the touchpad or the trackpad. Um, the trackpad is taking some getting used to. Uh, not It's not a bad trackpad outright, necessarily, but it's that... I guess I'm used to a, a different type of, of, of trackpad or a touchpad, like in terms of how it works 
with elements on the screen and the velocity, you know, which the cursor moves, I found that in, in many cases it was a, a far more fluid experience to actually touch the screen and interact with the screen uh, with, with touch than it was uh, with anything else. Uh, but generally, the items were responsive, uh, like, you know, whether we're talking about scrolling on a web page that was image heavy, uh, scrolling, let's say, in TweetDeck, that was relatively smooth with a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you know, um, uh, photos, uh, you know, seemed to be, you know, you know, even though they're graphically intensive, again, smooth and responsive to work with, specifically with the touch screen. Uh, and I, I've got a, a couple of exceptions here, I know. Um especially in relation to Android apps. So here's another bonus for the, the Pixelbook and other Chromebooks. You can download and install Android apps. Not all the Android apps, but a lot of them. And what's kind of neat about that is that many of them kind of work. Uh, though that said, uh, for example, I installed a Discord app. Uh, and the, uh, the Discord app I use, of course, to chat with the other people who are in Discord. You can join our Discord chat by heading over to uh, my Twitch profile or Patreon profile, subs.twitch.tv slash Chris Perillo, patreon.com slash Chris Perillo. Links are in this video description. And it worked. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. And I was like, oh, wait, the problem with the app is you can't increase the font size. And it's, oh, it's, it's a little disappointing. But it's really easy to switch resolutions on uh, on the pixel book you just use a keyboard shortcut it's also easy to get to keyboard shortcut overlay it's a uh, control alt uh, question mark and then you get the keyboard shortcuts to to better map out where things are i mean it's again it's taking some getting used to because when you're used to keyboard shortcuts on one system and then you have to go to another that's a challenge the nice thing is is at least on chrome os you can remap the control and alt keys back and forth which is more intuitive if you happen to be using uh, or, or accustomed to mac os and moving to a Chromebook like a, a Pixelbook, uh, but in terms of uh, you know that use being able to use the Android app on on this system, I think that's a, a huge bonus. It's not perfect, but I could see myself installing a lot of Android apps on the Chromebook and even using Android apps, not necessarily exclusively on the Chromebook, but using them. If as long as and I should say I've got to qualify this, if and only if I'm able to interact with them in touch because many of the apps I tried don't necessarily recognize or like the touchpad or the trackpad, whatever they're calling it. The uh, uh, one app that I can say definitely does not like the touchpad. Okay, there we go, touchpad. I'll just, uh, you know, it's an amalgamation of those two words. Uh, Instagram, like it would totally respond with the finger scroll, though it wasn't like, you know, an immediate response. It was, you know, working well enough. Uh, I, I think they could Im improve that uh, that time, the timing issue. So as I touch, it scrolls like immediately. Uh, but that said, um, you know, I was able to use Android apps. And I think it's a huge bonus of a, a system like uh, the, the Pixelbook. It's not just a web browser. Uh, it is running Android Nougat. Not, I, not that I think that really matters all that much. Uh, just an FYI, it is running an older version of Android. I'd expect that at some point in the future, uh, they'll update that code to Android, maybe, or sorry, to Oreo, and maybe in doing so, uh, will you know improve responsiveness and in, 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 in how how much resources that particular app takes. Uh, it obscures you know a, a, a great amount of the Android platform. Like, to my knowledge, you can't get to Android settings, but you can easily run apps. And by the way, though the, the battery is at 2%, it's still running. 1%, 12 minutes left. It's not bad for 1% having 12 minutes left. I don't know when it's going to die yet. Not that I want it to. Don't die. Don't die on me. You don't die on me either. Uh, the, uh, 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 the, the other issue I was going to mention is uh, jank. Uh, I had noticed a, a fair amount of jank in uh, some of the Android apps which seems to be apparent or, you know, systemic with Android, but not anything that was jarring, not not anything that was just prevalent and constant. Like, uh, you know, sometimes when uh, an app would load or be, you know, uh, uh, scrolling from side to side or whatever it was, you'd notice a couple of dropped frames, but um, nothing that I felt was, uh, you know, horrific. The, the, the worst part, I think, about the, the on-screen experience is specifically the blur uh, that I've noticed that I'm sure some people would be able to describe in more accurate terms. So you can touch the screen, and that works very, very well. The problem is, when you touch the screen, I'll just load this right now. I'll load Google Play. Um, here, it's, it's doing okay. But on the table, 
like if I'm if I'm going to interact with it on the table, it wobbles a great deal, especially if I'm like touching. And when I say a great deal, I really mean a great deal. So I can swipe to, to pull up the the menu there, and let's see here. We'll load. Well, those aren't those aren't uh, which call it apps. Let's go ahead and load Discord. The screen is just a little wobbly. And I don't know if you can really tell how wobbly it is from that uh, angle, uh, but that seems to be mitigated when you hold the, uh, uh, the, the 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 pixel book. And when you hold it, it's fine. Uh, but when you actually have it on the table, uh, it's it's not so fine. So there's the Cantina, my Discord chat, uh, interacting with the screen. It just it, it wobbles way too much. They needed to make that far more firm than it, than it was. The way around that, I suppose, is you get a tech holder like this one. It's called a tech holder. And you can basically place it behind the screen to, to basically act as a buttress. And, and look at that. It's, it's, it's not as wobbly. I mean, it still kind of wobbles a bit. There's too much give, honestly. But this is as easy as it was to uh, get an Android app working. You can resize the Android app. Uh, I can, I think, go back to my original size, or at least width, uh, and then, of course, run them side by side, and that's working. I mean, you can see people are, are chatting in there. If I wanted to, I could zoom in on the screen if it was a Chrome uh, app, but if I needed to oh, zoom in on the screen, I would use a keyboard shortcut, if I remember it here. No, that was going full screen. That was minimizing. I'm still <laughs> I'm still learning my, uh, uh, my keyboard shortcuts. Is it this? There we go. Alt-Shift. Or that's how I've mapped it, Alt-Shift. And then you can zoom in on the screen. Yeah, this velocity is taking some getting used to. Until Discord allows you to actually uh, change uh, the font size. So, I mean, it's and then you can go back to the, the defaults uh, pretty easy. So a lot a lot of those settings are available by way of the keyboard shortcut. Uh, getting it spot, getting that trackpad, however, just spot on to where you need it to be to, to resize is sometimes a bit of a problem. And sometimes it's just as easy to grab it with your finger. That's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. As, as I was referring to it uh, uh, just a, a few minutes ago, like how it's easier to interact with objects using the, the touch screen rather than the, uh, the trackpad. I apologize for how all this might look to everybody, but uh, I'm just, I'm going to keep rolling forward. The, uh, uh, the next thing I have noted, I keep tripping the assistant key. So this is really cool to have an assistant key down here, uh, right? The, the Google assistant key. And then as soon as you launch it, it you know, oh, I've got to teach you, uh, I've got to teach the assistant again. Really? I've already done that. Oh, I know why. Because I uninstalled and reinstalled the Google app. I'm on the beta program for it, so I'll have to retrain it later. Anyway, the assistant pops up. I've had issues where I've gone to toggle the alt key, and it trips the assistant app key, which is kind of maddening <laughs> like it's it's frustrating because like it just it pops up like right away and and I wish I had a way to better manage that. I like the assistant key there. Well, I mean, I like the assistant key, period. I kind of wish it was in a different spot, a, a spot that wasn't as easy to trip uh, because I've tripped it so many times on accident and it, and, and it just gets in the way. Uh, I'm still getting used to using a touch screen like uh, in, a, in a laptop construct, moving from Mac OS where you don't touch the screen. Uh, but uh, I'll just go ahead and keep that open. It's still running at 1%. Three minutes left. We're down to three minutes now that I've been... Dinking with it, you will see it. Uh, you will see the screen kind of uh, disappear here in just a moment. Um, the app manager can be a bit confusing. I, I noted, uh, and this is another way you can pull it up with this, like where they'd normally put the caps lock key. But I just swipe up from the bottom of the screen, and it works just as well. And you can see the screen wobble, or you may be able to. The problem is, look, I've got like three Play Music apps installed. Okay, you can't see. I've got three Play Music apps installed. Let me go ahead and get rid of that notification. It's telling me the system's going to die. Thank you. I get, I'm good. That was totally my fault. Boom, boom, boom. So which one do I launch? So I, I know that this one, just by tr trial and error, this one's going to be the Android version of Play Music. This one's going to be the, the, the Chrome web, full web browser version. This one's the mini player that only works when the web browser apparently is running in the background. It's, it's really, I'm just going to say it, Google, stupid. Uh, you know, the, the, the fact that I've got three Google Play, uh, I've got three Google Play Music apps running at basically the same time. And I, I like having the Android app more than the, the, the desktop app for this because I don't need a full-on desktop app to, to be able to play music. It'll work just fine that way. So there's that. Uh, it's awesome 
I will say, to see Chrome extensions working. So I'm not going to you know, bother showing you outright, but the, uh, 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 the Chrome apps or Chrome extensions that you can use on Google Chrome on the desktop can also be used on Chrome OS. That's something that I don't remember, uh, you know, all that, uh, 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 all that much with my only exposure to Chrome OS, uh, back in the day, but it's nice to see. It's nice to have. I really, I really like that feature a lot because, uh, I was swiping away the, uh, the, the menu bar or whatever they call it, the status bar. It's, uh, uh, it's something where you, you can get the software you need or might need directly from the web browser window, which you might be running anyway. So if you like a Chrome extension and use a Chrome extension, it can also be used on this system. And I've certainly used a, a few of them. And it's nice to be, able to, to be able to bring them over without worrying about installing something that may not be available for Chrome OS. So if it's in the Chrome Web Store, I believe it should be able to run on Chrome here in Chrome OS. A uh, huge benefit, huge boon, beyond being able to install and, and run uh, the Android apps. So that was awesome to see. Uh, I am worried, and this is more about the hardware, I am worried about the, the silicone uh, palm rest. See if I can just reflect it without you being blinded by the light. Wrapped up like a, there we go. I'll hold it like that. It's a nice little angle. Uh, you see the screen sticks there. Why is it sticking there, but it doesn't like sticking when I touch it? Hmm. It wants to be touched, but it doesn't necessarily like to be touched at the same time. I'm afraid this is going to collect dirt and grime, uh, the, the, the palm rests that flank the touchpad. Uh, it's a concern. I, I don't know if I'm going to need to get uh, some kind of skin or some kind of protector for it, but I'm inclined to keep my eye out for one because the last thing I want to do is have a you know dirty palm rest or have Jedi go... You know, and then mark it up, and then I can't eliminate the mark because it's been you know baked into the, the silicon. Uh, so I, I, I don't know how... Uh, best to clean those yet, but I know they're going to need to be clean. Not to say that my palms are dirty. Uh, let's see here, the next thing that I have that I have not already covered. Uh, the backlit keyboard is nice, but here, let's see. I hold, control. Yeah, there we go. The backlit keyboard is nice, but it isn't at the same time. Like the keys were virtually or I guess the lettering or the print on the keys were very difficult to uh, pick up on unless you were like pitch black. So if it's very dark, then you can then you can see what was going on. But like midway, like if it's just if it's kind of light in the room, you can't tell what's going on because they went with lighter keys and a, a darker print. And hopefully that I think I just. Oh, yeah, there's the battery battery icon. Knew that was coming. Um but I was able to get eke out how many minutes of use, general use, even having that low of a battery. It's not too bad. The and I don't even think I ever fully charged this up to a hundred either. Hmm. Uh, but the backlit keyboard I thought was fine to have in pitch black or extremely dark situations. Uh, the the uh, um, the balance of the light underneath the keys was not even. But what was more perturbing was seeing it somehow and want to automatically kick in when it wasn't pitch black. And it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's an, a nice hardware feature to have, but I wish I didn't have it toggling in, in, in such, at least I found it seemingly turning on when it thought, Hey, you know, you're in a lower light situation. You need to backlit keys. I'm like, no, you're wrong because Google did not implement them very well at all. Like the, the, either the light's not bright enough or it's just, it's, the, the light in the room ca cancels things out and then you can't see what the keys are because the, the light basically uh, you know, mitigates any kind of uh, legibility of, of the key print. Uh, temp mode, I thought, uh, was nice. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and open it again. This, as I pointed out, though, the battery is, is dead. Uh, battery is also upside down. It's definitely dead. But the temp mode, I think, is going to be very useful in situations where I'm broadcasting and I need to, a touch screen. Of course, the touch screen uh, works better in temp mode uh, without the screen wobbling. Uh, it, it certainly can be used, in, as I said, in laptop mode, but that was the caveat. But it definitely works better in this particular mode. Um, and I'm, you know, honestly, if I'm not planning on doing a lot of typing and, and just doing a lot of watching... Uh, or interacting in, in a light capacity, inclined to use uh, the uh, Pixel Book in, if I do keep it, uh, specifically in tent mode, uh, because it's a nice profile, it brings the screen closer to you without the, the keyboard jutting out. Uh, I'm not sure what my default usage model is, is necessarily going to be with it, it's just uh, certainly nice to have that option. Um, 
a, a, a bonus I have to throw in there, one that I, I guess I wasn't expecting, but it was nice. Two years worth of 100 gigs on Google Drive. I don't know if I'm going to be taking advantage of that outright, uh, but uh, nice to have if you use Google Drive. I got to keep things lean, mean, and clean there. Uh, and then another bonus, three months of play music uh, are thrown in, which could save money as well. But the the only thing that I see with that that I'm not, I don't really have an answer to is whether or not that applies to having a family plan like we do for YouTube Red and Google Play Music uh, or just in individual and it just basically applies to the balance. So I, I don't know how that's going to uh, come out yet. We'll find out, I guess, in a, a few more days. Um, the next thing I was going to note, and this kind of, this really leads more into the next video that I want to do for you that is comparing it to uh, the iPad Pro in terms of the things that I was looking for and the things that I use it for. Not that I meant to skip over anything in this initial impressions that you would have wanted me to cover. If there's something that I am missing, please let me know. I'd be happy to address it either in comments or in that other video or potentially even during TLDR, a, a live broadcast that we might do with y'all. I'm seemingly wanting to use it more than the iPad. When I know I can do one thing on this or that, despite having the keyboard with the iPad, I'm still inclined, in, in, and maybe it's because I'm kind of in the honeymoon period with the Chromebook, I'm still inclined to use the Chromebook before I go to the iPad um, for, I, I guess, reasons that I, I've yet to be able to uh, explain. Uh, but it is something that, that I am, I'm, I'm more inclined to do, uh, a task I'm more inclined to do on the, on the Chromebook, on the Pixelbook specifically. Uh, and it could be because I find the software to be generally more responsive then I do iOS being responsive in the in the operation of, of the, the the actual platform to be a bit more, not just intuitive, just more responsive. Um, and, and I wouldn't even say it's a better screen because I don't think it is. I think the iPad has a better screen. I'll save that for, for the video comparison, but I just wanted to say that I am turning to it. It's not that I'm like, oh, I don't want to use it. That is when I know I don't want the device around, when I just don't want to use it at all, which... It's kind of where the iPad sits at this stage. Uh, the last thing I will note, and this is really speaking to uh, something that I think you'd be interested in hearing, it's not really feeling like a $1,000 experience. It feels more like a $500 experience. It works, and, and it's nice-ish, but for $1,000, I would expect the backlight keyboard to work in all lighting situations especially when it was kicking in automatically. For $1,000, I would expect software to be fully fleshed out. Uh, for $1,000, I would not expect the screen to wobble when you touch it when it's designed to be touched. For $1,000, I would expect a lot more than what I think Google has produced. And I don't just mean in, in terms of industrial design because it is nice. It is clean. It is very lightweight. I, I really I adore what it looks like. I know some people have slagged the, the bezels on the screen. I, I guess I've never been bothered by bezels. You know, and especially if I was going to hold the device like this, you know, you need something to, to hold on to. You need your bezels, uh, especially if you're going to use it like a tablet uh, outright. Uh, but uh, I like uh, I like it uh, I, in, in general. It's just I don't think that it's worth $1,000. I was getting ready to pack up the Pixelbook pen. Here, I was looking for it uh, in, in the box, but I was getting ready to pack it up. Because I was thinking, I don't think I'm going to use this. And then I noticed something that I must have toggled in uh, the system tray. Uh, like, you've got a menu, a dedicated menu for using this pen. So I was like, what? So I was like, oh. And I tapped it. And you can use this pen not just to circle and then pull up Google Assistant, which to me is gimmicky. And I, I hope that can be remapped. But you can actually use this to just screenshot. You can you, screenshot screenshot portions of the screen. You can screenshot full screen, but if I only needed a certain part, I could use the pin uh, and pull up the menu and say, I just want to capture a certain part, and then you capture you capture the certain part, it saves it, and then you're good to go. Um, I like that feature. I'm like, oh, okay, that's neat. And then I was like, oh, then of course I could, you can make a quick note and I could do a quick note. Uh, it had a whole bunch of options in there that uh, I thought would, uh, would potentially be uh, useful. And so I may actually be keeping the pin. I was thinking that I was not going to keep the pin. Uh, I do believe that for $1,000, they should have thrown this in. I also believe that they should have made it somehow like magnetically stick around. I mean, yeah, look, it, it kind of fits there. 
But like, what if you're not in tent mode, right? And then you, you don't want to put it in the crack because then if you put it in the crack and then you shut it without remembering that you had it in there, then it cracks the screen. Not fun. But the cool thing is, is you can stand up uh, the uh, the pin on end. Uh, so it's very convenient. It will always be, you know, a reach away. Uh, I, this is my primary environment for using this type of system, uh, although I may float about the house. But uh, there's some more functionality for this pin uh, than, apart from drawing and apart from the Google Assistant gimmick. Um, I did uh, did a bit of drawing and I was able to sketch and I wouldn't say that the response time was amazing like I would draw and then I saw the line catch up to it you know it's not like instantaneous um, but it didn't bother me because I'm not like a power pen user in terms of like jotting down notes or writing or sketching or anything like that uh, but for you know an additional accessory I thought just as a bonus my initial impressions were eh but after seeing that menu, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I would definitely use this, 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 and this. So, awesome. It would, been, it would have been much nicer if they made that available for people who didn't have a stylus. That, was, that kind of upset me because they could have enabled pretty much every one of those features for your finger. That You don't need the pin to do a lot of that stuff. What are you going to do? This is, this is a company that's trying to figure out their way around hardware and, and what have you. And uh, At least I tried it. So, thank you everybody for tuning in to my initial impressions. Uh, I uh, hope to be able to eventually do a, a review of this. I don't know how long into the future that review will come, uh, but it, largely after I've, I've kind of decided if I'm going to go with it over the iPad Pro, uh, and, and that is probably a decision I'm going to be making within a week's time. Uh, I do, as I mentioned, plan on doing a comparison between the iPad Pro and the uh, Pixelbook. Uh, that'll be happening uh, tomorrow. Uh, you're more than welcome to tune in for that. As well as the TLDR broadcasts uh, in this channel on the weekends and then on weekdays, you can tune in uh, at youtube.com slash LockerGnome. With live videos, you'll be able to join Discord or watch Discord behind me, uh, and that can be joined, the Discord chat room, 